He was only a good vice president because he understood how to kiss Barack Obama's ass. So that lit him up. The president received about 30 plus seconds sustained applause in the Twin Cities following those remarks about former Vice President Joe Biden. That's kind of the way it was. James Carville remains with us. James, the Biden campaign is coming off a rough go. They chose a weird week to go into power save mode. He had himself defined on Ukraine by Donald Trump for over five business days, now just emerging from that. What do you make of the president's line of attack? Let me start where he said, and I, I grew, I'm going to be 75 week after next. I grew up in South Louisiana. My formative years were in the late 50s and early 60s. But of course, I know what that means. It means the same thing when he started out about the Central Park Five, and then he went into birtherism, and now it is. I mean, this is this not, no, no hidden trick here. Uh, this is exactly what you think it is. In terms of Vice President Biden, I, I, I thought Trump threw him a lifeline. I mean, he, he was attacking him, and, it, and he'd just come up and say he spends 25 more, 25 times more attacking me than anybody else because he knows I'll beat him, and he knows I'm competent, and he knows how to do things, and he knows I'll appoint an attorney general to see all laws that, that occurred within the statute of limitations are enforced in this country. He is scared to death of me. And if they would have just stayed and drilled down on that message— the Democrats would have rallied around him. Trump has a 100 percent very negative view among Democrats. And you don't answer it and, you know, say he's attacking my family or anything. You, you ask the question, why is he attacking? Because he knows that I'll, I'll beat him. And I, I thought that they missed an opportunity to have to not really drill down on that argument. Uh, but what Trump is doing now is, you know, in, in Minnesota, he's going back to his old playbook. And it's the same playbook I've been seeing since I, would, since I have a political memory. I've got something else to show you. Here is Sanjay Gupta at home with Bernie Sanders tonight on CNN. An echocardiogram tells the function of the heart, how well the heart right. is beating, and can also give some indication of how severe the heart attack right. was. Right. What did they tell you? Well, what they told me is that uh, that we are on the road to a full recovery. There was some damage, but what happens is, as it, within the next month, we'll see what happens. Uh, but so far, so very good. Sanjay Gupta, who happens to be a brain surgeon, uh, right. knows he knows from uh, heart attacks. And you heard Bernie there, James, say, confirm there was damage to the heart. That's what right. happens in a myocardial infarction. Uh, uh, sum this up. How do you look at Bernie Sanders uh, well, first, first these all, my, days? My, my daddy died of a myocardial infarction. My I'm dad had one at age 50. Yeah. My, my, I'm 75. Since Sanders, I think, is like three years older than me, I am happy that he's on the road to recovery. I am, too. I, I, I really am. If, 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 if Senator Sanders was 35 and in perfect health, I wouldn't be for him for president. But but I'm glad to see that that you know, many people uh, sustain these kinds of events and, and go on and live many more years and live a very fruitful life. I hope that's the case with him. I, I, I didn't I've never been for him for president. I, I never would be for him for president. But I, but I wish him a, a long, happy, fruitful life. What do you do, though, about the support he has? It's kind of right. it's hung up right now. And it he is. just killed it in the last quarter fundraising. But he is. And, and I think Democrats are just going to have to take a relook at the field and see where this is going. We're getting, I think, we're like something like four months away from voting. This is a very serious election. I think Democrats have to make a very serious choice. And there's one but one moral imperative here, and that is beating Donald Trump in 2020. This is not about Democrats feeling good about themselves. This is not about Democrats falling in love. This is about Democrats making an ultimate pragmatic decision to take out the greatest threat that the United States has had in the presidency since the beginning of this country. And I, I really, really believe that. This is, this is a time for Democrats to be very serious and say, not only who can win the presidency, uh, we keep the House, we have to pick up any number of Senate seats, depending on how my friend Doug Jones does in Alabama, it mm -hmm. could be three, it could be four, assuming we win the presidency. We need to have a majoritarian election here, and we have to be dead serious about how we do this. I mean, any of these candidates can be fine. They just have, have a message and have the political skill. 
to bring not only victory to us in, in the White House and the House, but we have got to get the Senate back. Because if you're looking at, at a Democratic president and a Democratic speaker and Mitch McConnell, I can tell you what's going to get done. Nothing. You'll, at least you'll have competent, honest people running the United States government. But it's not going to change much. So we we got to be very careful. We got to go into this with eyes wide open. We got to think. We got to use our heads in this and not our hearts, because the country is depending on the Democratic Party right now, like at no other time in history. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.